Transmissions and engines are the most important parts of any modern day vehicle, and not all transmissions are built alike. I'm going to share a list of some of the worst transmissions you'll find today, and hopefully it helps you avoid some of the trash cars you'll find them in as well. Let's get into it now. Life's too short to drive boring cars. The first transmission on our list is one that the manufacturer thought was truly breakthrough. They added a couple of gears, it became a 9-speed. After the outgoing 6-speed, the manufacturer truly believed it was the next best thing. It was an increase of 16% in fuel economy and was down about 7.5 kilograms from the outgoing 6-speed version. Now this particular transmission can be found in a lot of different vehicles. You can find it in the Fiat 500, you can find it as well in the Acura TLX the V6, you can also find it in Range Rovers, Chrysler 200 as well as a host of many other vehicles including what we're looking at right here and it's this little Jeep Cherokee back in 2014 boom it came out with such a breakthrough transmission that's right the ZF 9 HP by ZF. Of course it's a German manufactured transmission that produced a very sporting experience and was one of those transmissions that just was very intuitive and just knew what the driver would do supposedly until they actually had failures and of course this particular transmission isn't quite as durable and robust or as reliable as the other ZF 8 speed non-transmission you're finding in many other vehicles like from BMW and Range Rover and Jaguars as well. It wasn't bad enough that a vehicle like a lot of the products from Jeep and Chrysler were unreliable reliable with engines that were oil burning, with electrical systems that would fail relentlessly, as well as just poor build quality throughout, they had to go and put this 9-speed ZF automatic transmission inside this vehicle. Well, let's take a look. I mean, even this car looked like it had glad garbage bags for seats, but it's that very transmission that you see down on the console is the source of this particular issue. And sadly, it had all the bones to make it a great piece, but unfortunately in practice, it was a problem. There was issues with wiring harnesses that would short out and it would cause inadvertent shutoffs or the vehicle to be thrown into neutral accidentally, which is a catastrophic failure if you're actually worried about driving down the freeway or crossing a busy intersection. You also had issues with surging and jerking as well as aggressive downshifts. So it'd be driving along, it'd be slowing down and it would just all of a sudden jerk you down and it was very unexpected and unrelenting. Now, of course, that transmission, it was tuned in such a way that felt very spirited, but the sad reality was it had too many drivability concerns, slipping, juddering, shaking, and low speed operation could find yourself a little bit shaky and jerky. It was all about the tune up as well as some of the shorted wiring issues that some of the units had. Unfortunately, this wonderful German made nine speed automatic transmission had the potential but failed miserably. The next transmission that's received a ton of airtime in the last few short years. Of course, on the US side of the border back in 22, there was alleged class action lawsuits gathered together for people with this particular unit. As well, now this year in Canada, there's an extension to that and Canadians are also included on some of these class action lawsuits. We have Chevy, as you can see, parked right here. It's a great looking unit. This is a Tahoe. A lot of people love using these because they're large. They have lots of space, a lot of capacity towing capacity, transmissions are always utilized and a big part of towing. They're a big part of larger trucks and a stout transmission, super important and imperative that you have something that's reliable. Well, this is more of a stock mounted transmission control lever as you see in this unit. That looks quite different in different models because unfortunately it doesn't just begin and end with the Yukon right here. There's a whole host of models that have this problematic transmission. We could talk about the 2015 to 19 Chevy Corvette. How about the call Colorado from 15 to 23 and the Chevy Silverado as well from 2015 to 23. The new Camaro as well in certain configurations, the Cadillac Escalade, the 2015 to 2017 until they changed to the 10 speed auto. Of course, the Cadillac ATS, CTS V and the CTS 6. The Yukon as we're seeing here, of course, can't be excluded. Neither can the Canyon, Sierra or Savannah by GMC. So as you see, it's a very popular transmission. It's used in a lot of popular vehicles. So clearly there's a lot a lot of these vehicles driving on the road that have this dangerous condition and the condition is one in which where the vehicle surges and pecks and is reluctantly changing gears and suddenly surges and drops down unfortunately a lot of that can come at a cost of safety and security and a lot of people that's why have justified the problem with this transmission well what kind of transmission the 8l90 and the 8l45e are the two transmissions that we're speaking of in this particular circumstance and so if you're driving or owning or 
or even shopping for a truck or a vehicle that is in that range from 2015 to almost new essentially, make sure you do your homework because that transmission is clearly right smack dab in the middle of a class action lawsuit and there may be some recalls or transmission swaps in the near future. Another transmission on my list that's clearly not one of my favorites, both from a drivability standpoint because it drives, it becomes droney, it sounds very monotone, it doesn't elicit a very sporting experience, and it's basically just a dumbed down, boring, high maintenance lump of junk. And what we're talking about is the transmission, the Crapco transmission by, I mean, the Jatco, Jatco transmission that you'll find in this vehicle here. Now, these vehicles are using this type of transmission in different formats in different vehicles, but at the end of the day, this particular brand that we see here, Nissan, in this small little SUV, is one of the most popular models. You see a lot of them on the road these days, but clearly it's because of the mid-size, the practicality, and everybody loves an SUV. The problem is Nissan can't quite get these CVT transmissions. And what's a CVT? That's a continuously variable transmission, which you'll find in almost every relatively late model Nissan and Infiniti product. Right here we have the Murano by Nissan, and of course, as we see, it's a platinum all-wheel drive, but that's all noise and nonsense when you're stuck roadside because the transmission just overheated, let out some smoke, and crapped out a fault, as well as put you into limp mode. And means the vehicle hits the tow truck. None of that, all this gloss and fancy tail lights even matter when it push come to shove and the transmission lets you down. But what does it look like on the inside here? Well, there as you see down on the console, you have the little shift lever for the automatic transmission, and it does become slightly shiftable in a sporting type of setting. They're not about shifting gears. They're just about changing ratios on a set of pulleys and shivs, and that gives you a sensation of actually shifting gears. It's nothing really much more than an ATV transmission, belts, pulleys. Instead of the rubber band elastic type transmission, this one's more of a belts made of steel reinforced materials. Either way, it's not a well-made unit. These transmissions are causing lots of heartburn. Fortunately, the Nissan Murano isn't exclusively problematic because of the transmissions. There's also issues with the exploding sunroof issue. Have you heard of that? Where the sunroof just pop and it just blows out while the driver's going down the road, as well as the AED or the automatic emergency AEB, sorry, automatic emergency braking system, where inadvertently the sensors that are part of the program actually detect that something's in the way, even when there's nothing in the way and the vehicle literally just stops and just hits the brakes for no apparent reason, causing an obvious safety impairment. A lot of the Nissan products that carry the CVT are where the real problem lies. Yeah, every vehicle has an issue, but again, as I say, the engine and transmission are two of the most expensive and key components within any vehicle. And the next one is this little unit right here. Now, everybody sees this brand and immediately they think about rod bearings and they think about roadside fires and recalls of millions of vehicles and those things are all very accurate. They also think of, you know, build quality that's substandard. They think about shorting out electrics on the rear tow hitch when equipped. They think about other issues, suspension shakes and wobbles. And there's a whole host of issues that people think about, but we're talking about transmissions today and specifically we're talking about this vehicle. We're talking key Sportage, as you see right there. It has LED tail lights and laser cut rims, but no amount of good and gloss can ever wipe the problems that you'll find with these particular vehicles. I mean, look at it. Sure, it's a stout looking little unit and people are buying them because they look cute, but what's inside? Well, if you look down on the console, you'll see the controller, and that is the controller for either a six or an eight speed automatic transmission in this generation. And that is a big problem because this transmission is in fact a torque converter, six speed or eight speed, and normally that's the way to go. But in this case, there's been lots of troubles with slipping, juddering, poor drivability, poor engagement, poor disengagement. And this transmission has led to many customers actually having to go back to the dealership and actually rectify those drivability problems problems with a new rebuilt torque converter. Torque converter is the part that hydraulically connects the transmission, of course, to the engine and makes it all happen. That's the engagement part. That's sort of the automatic transmission version of a clutch if you were to talk about a manual gearbox. And unfortunately, it's that torque converter that is well known for problem areas and a high probability for a failure outright. That's just the way it is. Six or eight speed autos in these vehicles are definitely worth avoiding. But also, even if you're good at rebuilding your own transmissions with, I don't know too many people that are, there's many other issues and reasons you probably wanna avoid this. We can get suspension shakes and wobbles, particularly at high speed. Up front here, you can get leaky radiators. So coolant leaks are 
pearl found on these vehicles. You can get coolant on the ground. If you see a puddle there, it might in fact be a radiator. That is not an uncommon phenomenon, especially in a 2017 model year of these vehicles. We spoke about the torque converter, which is attached to the transmission, as well as fuel pumps. Fuel pumps come and bring in fuel from, of course, the fuel tank at the back to the front to inject into the engine to drive. Without that fuel pump, this vehicle's going nowhere fast. Cylinder misfire, so in other words, it just bucks and doesn't quite catch. There's may miss on one, two, three or more cylinders and it just becomes a real rough runner. Turbochargers can be a problem. That's what takes your velocity of air out of the exhaust and puts it back and spins a prime mover to re-inject the high pressure velocity air into the intake manifold to provide more power. Many other electrical gremlins too are part of the problem as well as dead batteries. That's right, batteries that you walk away from two days and there's people that have complained all of a sudden the battery's dead and the car won't start. So that is not just a matter of leaking, leaving a light on because most of these vehicles now are smart enough to prevent that from happening. The reality is there are leakages on the system that cause that to drain down. Oil burning from the engine and it ends up coming out of the exhaust here. Of course, sometimes in terms of pollution, other times the catalytic converter catches it because the catalytic converter is essentially a filter and you don't always see the blue smoke coming out the back, but it's not uncommon to see excess of amount of one liter added per thousand miles. And if that's happening, you definitely got excessive oil consumption. And that's not an uncommon problem with these vehicles. Faulty airbags, and there's a few of them, front, side, and back. And there's also been problems with the customers not being able to get in where the central locking actually locks them out and they're not able to get back into the vehicle and there's just a problem there so clearly electrics transmission oil consumption and rods mean that you're going to have a problem nine times out of ten you're going to see some level of a high consequence failure on these Kia Sportage and another transmission is brutally bad and it's what's in this little unit here it's so bad in fact it needs a colostomy bag mounted underneath to catch all of its guts and glory that are coming out of it constantly because it will blow a gasket well we're clearly looking at a Dodge it has the big crosshairs as you can see beautiful little rims on there cheap little handles, cheap little mirror. Look, running gear on top. Of course, we're looking at a flex fuel crew job here. But if you drive a Dodge and you think, hey, but I'm not driving a caravan, I'm out of the woods. Think again, because this doesn't happen exclusively on this model. There's a bunch of different models that use the 62 TE transmission six-speed auto. For example, you might find it in the Chrysler 200, Pacifica, Sebring, Town & Country, Dodge Avenger, Grand Caravan, The Journey, and of course, a ProMaster 5000. Dodge and Jeep have never really done good transmissions. It wasn't until they stepped into the ZF automatic transmissions that they improved things, but even the nine speed that they're putting in newer models aren't as good as they should be either. I can even share you a story. I personally know of somebody that owned one of these vehicles. It was a Grand Voyager and it had a front mounted transaxle like similar to this setup here. This person did every piece of maintenance to the T. Oil changes, fluid changes with an old gentleman, so he never drove it hard. He gave it time to warm up and cool down. He took care of this vehicle to the nth degree, and yet, one day, he put it in gear and boom! We had to look underneath because you try to put it in gear and it wouldn't go in gear. We looked under there, and we found a problem with the transmission way under there. It was a big problem. And it was so big, in fact, when he tried to put in gear, it would just sit there and grrr, make noise. What it did was it blew its guts out all over the ground, piece of the case blew apart, and all the oil was sitting underneath the vehicle. That was a well-maintained vehicle. Go figure. Another worthwhile mention is a transmission that's found in this little GM product here. What do we have here? This is a Chevy, as you can see, big bold in your face, pretty standard type of lighting arrangements. This is the Traverse right here. Yeah, single access in. Of course, you have a big roof rack on top. And look at the tail light assembly around here. This is a beautiful finishing unit and clearly competes with the likes of the Dodge Durango. This is a good mid to upper size SUV. Yes, it is all wheel drive. This does have a set of great looking exhaust tips on it and all kinds of great sight lines down the side. Now, the thing to mention here is this comes with a turbo four or a six cylinder engine. That's right, the infamous V6, 3.6 liter V6 I might add, but it's the transmission we're talking about. The transmissions in this is known to blow out transmission bands, burn transmission fluid, as well as leak the fluid. It's also known to jerk and buck and resist and hesitate. Yes, it is a nine speed automatic transmission and it's the 9T65. That's right. This is the second generation of the Traverse and of course when they did that they stepped up the transmission and in doing so 
reliability sort of said bye-bye. And here's the latest iteration. We have an Audi product. This is an S3 as you can see right here. But the older version, the DSG direct shift gearbox was a six speed automated double clutch gearbox, two sets of gears, basically servos and a whole lot of extra electronic linkages. Then they moved in 2008, came out with something that was seven speed. They had wet type and then they went dry type, prone to hot overheating, catastrophic failures, and it was very expensive to fix and replace. And at the end of the day, the DSG by Volkswagen Audi were one of the most unreliable workhorses they were fun and fast when they worked, but they cost a fortune to rebuild. And as a result, one of the worst gearboxes in history. And right there is the next one. Honda Civics are normally a staple of reliability and they generally are, even with the transmission that in question, but that one does get costly to fix when it fails. They're a great car that everybody loves because they trust them. They get great fuel economy, even when parts break and wear out, they're very, very cheap to fix. So it's a great car to own. And then looking inside, you'll notice the little stick shift on the console. It's not a manual. Manual's what you really want with these cars. But unfortunately, some of these, when equipped with the CVT, the continuously variable transmission, there have been problems. 2014, 2015 are a couple of key years you really want to avoid. The 1.5 liter turbo four cylinder as well, oil and fuel dilution, another one that you'd probably want to avoid for drivetrains. But you can expect three, four, five thousand dollars for replacement transmission for this thing if they fail. Otherwise, watch out for leaks, watch out for juddering, slipping, burning, overheating belts, and just general sloppiness in the drivetrain. That's gonna cause you the problems. So even with a Honda transmission, if you notice strange noises coming from the dashboard, strange noises from under the hood, even leaks, possibly that delay when you're trying to put the foot down into it and the vehicle just has a delay, 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 and then it goes, that's all an indication that you're probably dealing with a transmission problem and you better get it taken care of as soon as possible before it gets even worse. It might be just the servicing or it might be even further than that. And I bet you never thought a Toyota like this would ever make this particular list of bad transmissions. Look, we have a V6 engine good power 278 horsepower at a three and a half liter v6 yeah this is the old taco as they say right we talk about taco or tacoma in long of course you can tow a little bit of weight with it although it's not a massive horsepower machine it does have four by four and it does have some great styling details and cues look you got this nice detail here little running boards it's a sturdy box it has great little tie downs and a little rear slider on the window look at the handles are basic and simple but they just don't break the mirrors look great as well and you have these basic wheels on this unit now of course you can get a lot of different configurations the sr5s and all kinds of off-road packages this one looks more like highway version of course basic set of headlights on this toyota and it's a gorgeous little unit all the way around you cannot go wrong here of course, what we have here is a basic set of suspension and the full-size cab here. So you haul a lot of happy customers around in this truck. But would you believe it? That transmission is horrifying. That's right. If you're going to get the V6 Tacoma like this, you have to get the manual gearbox. If you get the automatic, it carries what they call the AC60, which doesn't necessarily fail a ton. It just makes you feel like you might as well just the way it drives around. It lugs and loafs around like basically Shrek. And honestly, it's not the greatest transmission to drive. Now the V6 engine has good power when you're in that gear, but it always is very delayed in going from park to gear or reverse to gear. And you wanna just get moving, there's a huge delay. There's also delays where you're going to step on the gas and you want to expect it to downshift and get moving, and it doesn't. It just holds the low RPM because it's trying to maximize fuel economy, and that was all in the programming. Now, a lot of people who've owned them said the dealer was able to retweak some of the tuning and the programming on the transmission and make it much more agreeable, but the fact remains, it's just not the greatest match for that drivetrain. It's a little bit of a meager engine. It's the type of power that you get and the torque from that engine is just enough to be dangerous, but not enough to be exciting. And it certainly isn't a great match for that transmission. So at the end of the day, if you want one of these tacos, I could only suggest getting the manual with the V6. And here's a little winner right here. What do we have here? Clearly, it's the blue oval of despair, I might add. Of course, they had an automatic transmission. Well, really, it was a manual that they tried to convert. One, three, five was one set of gear clutches, and four and six were the other set. Now, it was split up a double clutch transmission, all for the sake of performance, economy, and they bragged that it would be the next best thing since sliced bread. But I like to call it the powder puff or the fluffy puff or the power shift gearbox 
by Ford. I mean, Ford and their little cars like the Focus and all of their other little jazzy wagons often use that. When you didn't use a manual transmission back about 10 years ago, you wound up going with the DCT. And it was a dry set of clutches as opposed to a torque converter that's wet. The problem was there was lots of issues. It was poorly designed and just wasn't up to the task. I mean, look, sure, Ford cuts corners there and they cut corners on cheap mirrors cut corners by not putting sunroofs and these cheap handles are corner cutting measures too. Look at those little tail lights, quite a basic looking set on this little Focus. Because it was a dry type set, a lot of people didn't like the way it operated. It was jerky, it was lurchy, it was delaying and bang and it hits and it failed outright. Transmissions were quite expensive, five to 10 grand to get that replaced. And sometimes it just never fixed it properly. It was a drivability nightmare for many customers. People weren't looking for McLaren or Ferrari type performance. Those cars have lots of performance and they associate them with a the double clutch for maximum shift speed. But this is a daily driver, or it was meant to be, and they tried to incorporate this double clutch power shift into a standard pedestrian type vehicle. A lot of people didn't know how to drive it, and it was also poorly built. So a combination of quality control issues, as well as junk, all combined to make a vehicle that was problematic, costly, and a nightmare and something that Ford wished was in their rear view mirror. And with all of that said, right there, you're gonna wanna see that one. If you like to avoid bad transmissions, you'll probably wanna avoid bad engines. Hope to see each and every one of you all in the next one. We'll see you then. Thanks everyone, bye-bye.